Hi, my name is Natalie, and I am a R&D scientist with Thermo Fisher Scientific. I will present a macrophage panel designed with the Invitrogen Flow Cytometry Panel Builder. Our first step is picking our instrument with the appropriate laser and channel configuration. Now one thing to note here is that while there is an extensive list of instrument options, you can filter by typing in your cytometer name. You can also edit your settings such as the bandpass filters and wavelength, or simply build your cytometer from scratch using your own parameter configurations. Now I will be using the BDLSR for TESA. Our next step is to enter our markers and viability die. For the purpose of this experiment, the target species is human. Now here you would enter any antigens that you currently have on hand, fluorescent proteins such as GFP, and next the markers we need. Here I have CD14 and CD68 as my general phenotypic markers. Now when choosing your markers, you want to pay attention to your protein abundance, as that will come in handy when you're choosing your fluorophores. If it is unknown, simply leave it on medium. I've set both CD14 and CD68 to high. And next up we have our functional markers, CD163, which is a scavenger receptor expressed on the cell surface of monocytes and macrophages. We have VSIG4, which is expressed on tumor infiltrating macrophages. IDO, is one of our intracellularly stained targets, and VISTA, otherwise known as B7H5. Now, another great feature to highlight here is our dump channel. Dump channel is for using the same fluorophore on your unwanted markers. In this case, we have CD56, CD45R, and CD3, which are our natural killer B and T cell markers, respectively. Now, to set your target into the dumb channel, you simply go to edit, more options, and there's a yes, no toggle. Pretty simple here. Once you've said, yes, I would like to include this in my dump channel, you go ahead and confirm your selection and move on to the next step, which is adding your non-antibody reagents. And here I will be using a fixed viability dye. Now our next step, picking the fluorophores for each specific antibody. Now, it is a general rule of thumb that low-expressing or unknown targets should use brighter formats, while high-expressing targets dimmer formats. Brighter is not necessarily better, as that can result in spreading error. Now, if we go back to the protein abundance, CD68 we indicated high. Now, when you set your protein abundance to either low or high, you're going to have four or four recommendations indicated by these black flags. As you can see here, with this target, we set high protein abundance, so it recommends FITSI, which is a pretty dim format. And you can see this among the other colors, too, and other targets. Now, each of these dots represents an available fluorochrome for this target, so here we have six available colors for our CD14 with a recommendation. The great thing here is also our built-in spectra viewer to look at our emission, spillover, and spread. Now this populates as you pick your colors. So if we go back to our CD68, I will deselect. And you can see here that it's been dismissed. And we will go back and select. And now it appears. Another great thing when choosing your color is that it also tells you how many clones and which clones in particular are available for that fluorophore. Again, we select. Now with the Spectra Viewer, you can also set it to full screen mode and it's adjusted by each individual laser. So you can see we have our UV, our violet, our blue, yellow, and red. Now you can adjust your spillover threshold if needed if it's deemed necessary. Now here we can see in our red laser that we do have some spectral overlap between our IDO and our dump channel markers. Now because IDO and our three markers in the dump channel, 
These are mutually exclusive, so it's a bit more forgiving. But overall, we have great separation between our co-expressing markers. Okay, now our next step is selecting antibody clones. Now some clones, now some targets will have multiple clones available, but not all. So here we have clone 61D3 for one of our phenotypic markers. Now here we have two clones available. We have eBioY1 slash 82A and KI-M7. Uh, I personally do like this clone. I've used it a couple times. And CD163, we have MAC2-158 available. Now if you click on the figures for this specific clone, you can see that it's undergone advanced verification, meaning that the antibody was verified by relative expression to ensure that the antibody binds to the antigen stated, which makes it a much more desirable clone in my opinion. Okay, now we have our VSIG, our IDO, which I think the clone name IDO being a play on the actual target. Again, these are fun little facts. And here we have Vista, again, another play on words with our clone name and our target. Uh, Vista being part of the B7 family, we have the clone name B7H5. And lastly, we have our dump channel markers, or not quite lastly, because we do still have our viability die. Now CD3, uh, one of my personal favorite clones to use, is OKT3. It's a general T-cell marker, commonly used. And here we have our live dead fixable blue dead cell stain kit. Uh, so when it comes to our, our analysis, we can focus on our live cells. And we'll just go with 400 assays because that's how great it is. And now our final step. Now that we've picked all of our clones, you have your cart. Now you can either purchase your antibodies or you can export your selections into a spreadsheet or a PDF. And you can also save your panel. So here, you can save your panel. I'm gonna call it my Mac panel and creator. Simply save and you can go back to it. And with this, we are now ready to, we're one step closer to beginning our experiment.